Hello everybody, it's Amanda. How are you doing? Uh, it's another, it's time for another Heart Squad video. So I uh, haven't done one for a while and uh, the person that I'm going to be channeling today has been waiting in the wings extremely patiently for quite a few months now. Uh, he said to me this morning, he said, gee, it's hard to get a slot with you. <laughs> and I'm really picking up his um, very, um, it's an unusual sense of humour that he's got. And I hadn't picked it up uh, as much in the first two channelings, but it's, it's, it's slightly quirky and um, it's subtle. That's the word I want to say. He's got quite a subtle sense of humour. So um, we've been having a little bit of a laugh. Um, but yes, this energy has been building for a couple of days. It was the anniversary of his death on the 21st of April. So uh, I am still in the week uh, of the 21st, just about. And I wanted to honour the fourth anniversary of his death. So he died at age 57, four years ago. And I have done, if you haven't seen them already, two other channelings, at least two other channelings. In fact, I think I've done three channelings with Prince. They're all on a playlist called Heart Squad on my YouTube channel. And I'm not going to go over questions that I've already answered in those three videos. So we have addressed, for example, the colour purple. We looked at purple rain. We looked at um, Galactically, where he has a strong link. Um, that is the Pleiades by... by um, for, for example, although it's funny because those of you that follow me regularly know that I'm very hot on the fact that we mustn't get too tied up in terms of we only have links to one particular star system because actually we're all galactic and we're linked into the whole wider universe. And one, the only deck of cards I've got here for Prince, and I might not even use them, is a sacred geometry deck. Um, but I did just to sort of get into the vibration of what we're about to do. I thought I'm just going to pull a card and see what we get. And it's one which is which says out out beyond Orion. <laughs> OK, so um, uh, to me that straight away was saying, you know, it's like he's far, far away. And it's like we're asking him to come back here, um, which he is. And he's actually been around me for a couple of days, um, went for a walk two days ago and I have never seen so much purple in my life. Purple flowers, purple um, buildings, purple cars. Um, it was quite extraordinary. So purple is one of my links to him for obvious reasons, although I know it isn't just the only colour that's associated with him. But, you know, when he wants to grab your attention, he seems as though he's very, very insistent. Didn't do this session yesterday because I was feeling tired and you have to have your energy at a certain level to be able to channel. Today is actually Sunday. I'll put the date. It's Sunday, the um, 26th of April. And uh, I was in a bit of a dither even whether to do it today, although we are going to do it today. And it's all tied into um, working on the Sabbath. Although when the Sabbath is, well, when the Sabbath is, is of course um, open to debate because uh, I grew up in the Christian faith and we talk about Sabbath being Sunday but not so in other um, faiths. Without getting bogged down on the Sabbath, it's more to do with what Prince is talking about, is having a day which is sacred and holy. Um, I mean, he's saying all days should be sacred and holy, of course, but one day in the week where you allow yourself properly to align to the divine, um, to rest, um, to recharge your batteries, but also for uh, a chance for increased cr creativity and inspiration to come in as well. Um, but we've sort of dodged it a little bit today because we know that time is not linear and Prince is the great master of time as well. So it's like he's saying he's weaved a bit of magic here. So we're working on Sunday, but we're sort of not. <laughs> <laughs> in some other timeline this is another date and another day and another dimension okay so let's bring him in anyway let's bring him in um <clears throat> i've already cleansed the room in fact he was very very particular i don't know whether he had a bit of a cleanliness thing whether he i think he must have had a thing about cleanliness because my room that i work in is always clean it's always pretty tidy um, but I had to literally, I had to wash down the desk. I had to literally start from scratch. Everything was washed down. 
Um, he was very particular about what needed to be out. And shall I just tell you what, what is out? Because I think it's interesting because, again, there are ways to help you connect into him um, at other times. So, of course, I've got representation of the colour purple. I've got a purple candle. I've also got a purple organite here, which was gifted to me, which is rather lovely. Um, the crystals that are out are quite particular. Uh, basically, clear quartz, selenite, amethyst, celestite, and I've also got some blue obsidian, which is my little galactic star being head. Oh, and I've also got some gold kyanite as well. So, in terms of colour spectrum, we've got gold, clear, blue, and amethyst as the colours that seem to be surrounding him. Blue, a nod also to the galactic um, line with him. Um, and I've also got a representation of the Ankh. I'm going to talk about the symbol for New Earth, which isn't necessarily the Ankh. He's got uh, quite a bit to say on that. Um, he didn't want sage burning. He said it was too heavy for the energy right now. Um, not to say not to use sage in other circumstances, but just for his for me and him, our connection, it needed to be a lighter scent. So I've chosen, he really wanted frankincense, but I've actually chosen some incense, which is linked into Archangel Uriel, um, which felt as close as I could get it. it smells nice anyway. Um, he's very particular about dress. I went to put on something today, but I was dressed in something else to start with. And I had a t-shirt on and a pair of culottes. And he was like, he really wasn't impressed with the culottes. And as I was looking through my wardrobe to try and find something else to wear, uh, it was a bit like Freddie Mercury. When I channeled Freddie Mercury, it was like, what is this? What is this in your wardrobe? Where's the, where's the more feminine stuff? So um, I've put on a dress and I've put on some pearls and I have got my diamonds on because the song Diamonds and Pearls seems to be very, very appropriate right now linked into his energy seems to be something about honoring the divine feminine and the divine masculine energy within ourself and within each other there's also a bit of a romantic energy at play a flirtatious energy with him um which is what he was all about but he's encouraging us to maybe uh he's saying flirt with ourselves a little bit more you know um so in all seriousness the clothes are an example of that so if you dress in a way that is a bit more, I don't know, dowdy or shapeless, well, that you that that can represent an aspect of yourself. Whereas if you put on something that is more fitted, feminine, whatever, um, you step into that. It's the same as putting on a pair of high heels, he's saying. He loved his high heels, didn't he? Um, so I can't wear high heels, though, Prince. I'm too tall. So he said, well, get some kitten heels. OK, he's saying get some kitten heels. Right. Like, there's no letting off. It's, it's, uh, this is important, actually, because it's like he's trying to honour the divine feminine energy. And um, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, he was quite a feminine man in the way that he dressed and his manner was very soft, very, very gentle. And uh, I suppose it's no surprise that he's bringing that forward today for us. And he's saying increasingly in lockdown, um, you know, people are letting themselves go a little bit. So there's this thing about, it's not about not letting yourself go. It's more about honouring yourself. It's about honouring yourself as a divine feminine, honouring yourself as a divine masculine also. So, um, and he says clothes are part of that. Clothes are... Um, what we show to the world, but equally they're what we show to ourself. So when you look into the mirror, you see what you're wearing. And if what you're wearing is not representative of what you want to be flowering um, from inner to outer, then you need to change that. Okay. So he's got a lot to say today. Um, Oh, I'm just gonna, he wants me to do this as well. I mean, he, the energy is clear here, but I think this is to do with if you want to connect with him, you need to be making sure that the energy around you is very clear 
because his vibration is really high. And if you're sitting in a, a space that is quite dense or you've just had an argument or um, there's negativity or toxicity around you or in the room, it's going to be harder for him to come in and connect. It doesn't mean it's impossible, but you're going to get a better connection if the energy around you is as high vibe as possible. So I have already cleared it. I've cleaned it. I've, um, I've put my incense on. I've lit my candles, but I'm also going to just do this. I know you're all going to ask me where I got the, these from because everybody does every time I show them to you. Um, they're a, they are shell, basically. They're shell and uh, they help clear the energy. They're from a company called Sound Travels. Sound Travels. It's an online company in the UK. If I forget to put the link below, just Google it yourself. Sound Travels. And they're underneath Sound Therapy Instruments. I don't know what they're called, but anyway, you'll see them. So I'm just going to do this for a minute just to clear the energy and then we'll get going. Start with the symbol for new earth prince okay let me just bring him in for you though i mean he is here but let me just um so you can feel his energy as well so let's bring in the rainbow bridge energy and let's bring in the purple energy prince So welcome back. Thank you for having me, he says. Uh, let's just get a picture of how you look for people today. He's coming in very much in line of um, probably the diamonds and pearls era. OK, so those of you that are fans know the sort of way that he used to dress in that era. Um, there's a loose, um, I don't want to call it a shirt. It's more like a blue blouse. It's like a, a loose blouse. It's white, sort of very V-cut. I can see his hair, chest. He's got chest hair. Um, masculinity, he's saying. Um, he's got uh, jewellery around here. He's got his ank on. Um, he's got trousers that are... He's so small. He's got such a small little waist. Um, belt. He has got... Just try to see what he's got on his feet. He hasn't got heels on. He hasn't got boots on. He's not barefoot. He's not showing me his feet for some reason. Why are you not showing me your feet? Okay, it's not because you haven't come come closer to me, if you can, please, Prince. Just bring your vibration just down a couple of notches, just so you're more earthbound. The earth represent being grounded and here on earth. Okay. <laughs> he says for me to actually come um, quite close to earth. Uh, he's, he's actually showing me, he's got like a pair of lead boots on, which is not something that he would normally wear um, when he was alive. But lead helps to defy gravity. It's like it's a heavy metal. So it helps to bring him down. He's, he's, he's having a bit of a laugh today. He's in a very soft, playful mood. I want to say playful mood um, because he's showing me, uh, he does this every time. You do this every time to me. He always arrives in a different manner. So we've had him arriving in a great big like juggernaut lorry. We had him, I can't remember how, we, 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 he's been arriving in like a puff of dry smoke, I think, before. Well, what I'm seeing him doing now is he's arriving and it's like he's holding onto this balloon. Uh, the balloon is rainbow coloured and he's, he's, it's like a hot air balloon, but there's no basket. It's just like a balloon in the sky. He's hanging on to sort of like this string. He's, at the, he's holding on to it and the, the balloon is now coming down and landing on Earth. Well, that was spectacular. That was spectacular. I didn't see that coming. I never, ever see the way that you're going to arrive. You're always going to be surprising us like that. He says, always, always. OK, um, right. So he's down. He's now here. All right. Do you want to take a seat, Prince? He says, fine, I'll just stand for a bit. He says, I, I quite like just to walk around. It helps me to think. OK, that's fine. Uh, he says, but there is a chair there if I need one, isn't there? He's laughing. OK. Um, 
he said, oh, okay. And he said, no, no, actually, now I'll come and sit closer to you. So it's like he's, uh, there's almost a part of him which is very polite. Well, he is very polite. He's a very polite soul. And it's as though he suddenly felt he was being disrespectful to be walking around whilst I'm sitting down. So it's like uh, he's pulling up a chair now nearer to me and he's saying, sorry, I'm, I'm here now. So, uh, okay, now you're sitting in a chair, Prince, but I did say to you earlier on in the week that what we're going to be doing today is a bit like Mastermind. And I had to explain to him what Mastermind was. And for those of you that don't know Mastermind, Mastermind is a TV program in the UK. You sit in a big black chair, a bit like what I'm sitting in here, and you have a specialist subject and you have like a minute to answer your questions. And then it goes to general knowledge. And it's a long run, long running quiz show. And anyway, he's said that he's going to sit in this mastermind chair and the specialist, the specialist subject is Prince. And he's like, how, how, how can I answer questions on myself in terms of that being my specialist subject? But, you know, he can, of course. And then we'll move on to general stuff as well. It's going to be longer than a minute, but um, uh, the point is that they're rapid fire questions. So I'm going to try and get through as many as I possibly can, if that's OK. And I've got pages of them here, Prince, in terms of what people want to hear from you. I haven't read these questions before either. So let's just go straight in. Um, oh, I did talk about the symbol for New Earth. Uh, no, we'll come back to that. I want to just go into a question. Uh, Alison Sassano, lovely name. Uh, During his lifetime, I was never into Prince the pop star. However, shortly after he passed, I became obsessed with watching his videos and learning what he really was all about. I feel he wants us all to dive deeply into fearless creative expression, passionately allowing our fullest light to shine as if we have all been playing it safe for far too long. Oh, he says, I hate that word safety. I hate that word safety. Um, he said, that's what constrains so many people, um, whether they be an artist, whether they be a musician, whether they be a business person, whether, they, whether it's just somebody who's dealing with their everyday life. The fact that so many people play it safe and play by society's standards of what is acceptable at any particular time. Playing it safe is like death um, in terms of creative process. For anything um, new and worthwhile to be born, you have to step into a new zone. And the zone that you step into is often a place where nobody has stepped before. Um, there is too much imitation, he says. There's too much imitation out there. Too many people trying to imitate what has already gone before or trying to imitate somebody else who is already successful. Um, this is bound to fail, he says. Um, and it is bound to fail because you will only ever be a, uh, a lesser version of the one that you're trying to emulate. It is so important that every single person on this earth plane realises that they have landed and that they have something within themselves that is completely and utterly unique. And it is only you that can bring that out. And it is important to just embrace it as fully as you can. Now, I'm looking up there because he's drawing my attention to a picture that I've got on my wall, which expresses what he's trying to say. So I'm just going to get the picture. So he's, um, he's drawing my attention to this picture that I've got on my wall. And it's like he's saying that the horse represents the, uh, the creative... Um, and the inspirational energy within you, the life force energy within you. And it's as though you are riding this energy that actually is within yourself. Um, and most people are actually even too frightened to get onto the horse, okay? They're too frightened to get on the horse in case it bucks them off um, and or they don't know how to ride it. But he's saying the thing is, your creative essence, the... The, the, and also the soul essence that you have within you um, uh, just requires um, an allowance and a surrender to unleash it and allow it to be what it needs to be. And the energy, the, the energy of water is very important as well, which is to do with flow, um, allowing things to flow out of us, not trying to control things too much. 
Um, I've got a book open in front of me, which one of you sent in to me. Thank you. It's a huge book. It's full of pictures of prints. And um, it's very, very heavy, actually. But this was the one that I opened it at today. Can you see that? And on his cheek, he's written the word slave. And I suspect that this was probably around the time that he was trying to break free from his uh, record, from his record label. Um, and he felt like a slave to them. And so there's something here to do with not being a slave to what is just expected of you, not just, um, let me just get the words right. What are you trying to say? Not being a slave to others. Um, nobody can enslave you but yourself. Um, nobody can trap you but yourself. You are a sovereign being. Um, you are a free spirit. You are one of God's creations. As soon as you start to recognise that and truly own that, it allows this life force energy that can take you to wherever you truly need to be in life. And ultimately, for you to be able to fulfil the potential that you came in with, okay, whatever that is. Okay, I said this is going to be quick fire prints, so we're going to keep moving on here. Um, okay, Mare Mare, thank you so much, Amanda, for channeling Prince. It was just the fourth anniversary of his passing two days ago, and I'd like to ask him how he would want us to continue to honour and celebrate his life and his legacy. Okay, how would you like people to honour and celebrate your life and your legacy? How would you like people to continue to celebrate and honour your life and your legacy? I am honoured that anybody wishes to do so. He's taking me back to a word that he gave me yesterday when I asked him what was the overall purpose of his work. What, you know, if you could give me one word, what was the overall purpose of what you were trying to achieve by your work? And the word he gave me was transcendence, transcendence. Um, so talk a little bit about that, because I feel that this ties into this question. Transcendence. Transcendence is about being able to transcend any lower thinking, transcend any blocked emotion, transcend what is, you think is possible and take you to a higher elevated state. Uh, to transcend conditioning, to transcend patterning, for music to be able to lift you into another uh, realm, another frequency, another room is what he's saying. It's as though um, via his music and the fact that people are still listening to it now, it's as though he's giving me the song Let's Go Crazy as an example. So say, for example, you're feeling really frustrated, you're feeling very much stuck in a rut, you feel as though life is never going to change, you feel as though the world is against you, maybe you're st steeped in victim consciousness or doubt or fear. The energy of the song, as an example, Let's Go Crazy, is trying to help you transcend that so that actually it's as though you realise anything is possible. Um, Diamonds and Pearls, he's saying, is about being able to transcend into a state where you feel as though you are worthy of a great love. Uh, you're worthy of being loved. You are able to appreciate that you are worth Diamonds and Pearls, that somebody actually will offer those to you. Diamonds and Pearls, of course, being symbolic, not necessarily the actual jewels. So this thing about... Um, how would you like us to continue to honour and celebrate my life and legacy? It's, he's saying, what, would, what gives me pleasure is to see people listening to my music and to see the effect that it has upon them, um, that they might not even consciously be aware is as a result of the music that they've listened to. He's saying, I don't need um, you know, a badge or a prize that says, this is as a result of listening to this music that I became this person. But he says inside of me, it gives me a great warmth to see 
that the energy that I put into the music that I put out, which is very varied and about many different human emotions, when you listen to it, it gives you an opportunity or a doorway to be able to turn the key and transcend into another different state. Now, can I just mention here, Prince, Leonard Nimoy? He says, sure. Okay, so um, Prince is very aware of some of the work that I've been doing recently, for example. So Leonard Nimoy was one of the recent channelings that I did. And I just happened to be watching an interview with Leonard last night, uh, Prince. And in it, Leonard was talking about um, Star Trek and uh, that when he used to go to conventions and people would come up to Leonard Nimoy and say, you don't realise, but I'm now a scientist or I'm now a school teacher or I'm now an engineer because of what I saw watching Star Trek as a teenager or a young adult or as an adult. Um, it, it changed something within me. It was like a key. And I, I, owe it to, I owe it to you. And he was laughing, but actually he was also owning the fact that that, that happens and does still happen. And it's the same sort of vibration I'm getting with you, Prince. Is that right? He's saying, yes, absolutely. So it's this thing about um, his heart gets warmed when he sees the power that his music can still have. So he says, just keep playing the music, sharing the music. Um, I'm not feeling any energy with him uh, in terms of, but you can't share it in, you know, a lot of the time when he was alive and there were reasons for it, he was trying to protect his music. Um, and now I'm feeling as though he just wants it shared as widely as possible. Um, there was a question that came in from one of you, I might be able to find it in a moment, which was along the lines of some of the unreleased tracks that are now being released by the record company. Um, and it's like, well, how does he feel about that? Is it okay to listen to them or not? Because actually, you know, it just doesn't feel particularly right because of the energy behind maybe the record company. But I'm getting a feeling from him, just, just, it's like he's saying, open the floodgates. He's saying, just open the floodgates, just allow the, the music to be heard. Um, stop worrying about the gatekeepers, is what he's saying. Uh, stop. Sorry, my, um, the memory card suddenly said it was full, but it's perfect because what I was just saying was Prince was saying, open the floodgates. <laughs> and then um, my memory card just suddenly said it was full and the, and, and the camera went blank. So I've put a new memory card into it, um, but it's always symbolic when these things happen. So it's exactly what I was just saying. It's like the um, he's showing me a dam and it's like all of this unreleased energy, which is what is within the music that they're releasing now, it needs to be released and allowed out. So forget about the gatekeepers, forget about the people who might be making money off it or whatever. It's about the energy, it's about the music. So he's saying, feel free to listen to it and listen to it with my pleasure. Okay, okay, let's go straight on. Um, This is a good one. Kerry Dawes, I would like to ask if there is a significance to his attraction to the paisley pattern or if it was just an aesthetic thing for him. Purple paisley will always make me think of him. OK, um, so I'm asking here, Prince, about that, then the paisley pattern. Oh, my nose is going, which always means I'm onto something. OK, um, let me just have some water. Paisley pattern. Why the paisley pattern? He's shown me a number of different things. Aesthetically, yes, he just liked it, but there is a deeper um, symbolism to it as well. Um, intricate patterns, which is what Paisley basically is, um, link into a number of different things. One, he's showing me um, how to explain it. Uh, neural pathways um within the brain basically um he said if 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 you could see inside your brain um when you are inspired it's as though all these neural pathways are firing here there and everywhere and it's like this amazing um, um symphony and cacophony of energy and the energy goes here, the energy goes there, it spirals. It says it's the most glorious pattern. 
he's saying so true, so too, the cells within your body, um, the patterns that they make as they multiply and they divide and they uh, multiply again. And it's something to do with, um, so he's showing me that, he's showing me it was like biological patterns um, or maps. He's also showing me like a mind map, you know, that technique whereby if you've got a problem, for example, or you're trying to come up with a, um, a new creative idea, um, you can put one word onto a piece of paper and then you conceptualize it. You, 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 all these different words come off it. So if, for example, I've got Ashtar here as an example, Commander Ashtar. So say I put Ashtar on a piece of paper and then from that there might be the colour blue, then there's the cut, then there's a spaceship, then there's Star Trek, then there's, I don't know, space, then there's um, third dimen a fifth dimension and beyond, then there's star seeds. Uh, then there's angels, then there's this, then there's that. And it's like you have this great big mind map, but it all comes from one word. So something to do with the Paisley pattern being very much to do with the powers of creation and how everything interweaves and um, but somehow makes up the wider whole. And I'm looking at my window now and you can't see my window, but 11 years ago when we, when we moved into this house, we chose some glass for certain windows and I'm looking at it now and it's got a pattern within the glass. It's actually really beautiful. And I noticed before I came to do this video for you, um, I'm gonna have to show you the pattern, aren't I? Hold on. Let me take you over there for one minute. Um, the pattern was reflecting on my window and I thought, what's that? Is that a sign that Prince is here? Well, yes, it is. Can you see that pattern on my window? Yeah? So, <laughs> something about that. Let me just come back over here. I'll have to show you that. I'm walking around now, Prince, you see. So Paisley, yeah, the interconnectedness of everything. Um, it's almost like, it's like a visual illustration of the powers of creation when the floodgates are opened and it just goes here, there, everywhere, and it's just in flow. Um, I feel like I want to pull a sacred geometry card at this point. So let's just do that. So Prince, can you give me um, what you want to say next? I feel there's a message wants to come through in these cards from him. So let's just pull a sacred geometry card. These are from Francine Hart. Okay, Prince, one card, please, from here. What is it you want to say? wise friend okay the wise friend it shows a tree shows a tree um it shows the spiral around the tree it shows the patterning of the branches it's not quite paisley um there's owls on the branches being able to see into the dark in a way that others can't. There's something quite psychedelic in it as well. Um, it's like a psychedelic energy, um, hallucinogenic energy without taking drugs. There's something there in the Paisley pattern which is very otherworldly in the same way that this seems to be otherworldly for some reason. I'm gonna leave that, I'm gonna leave that out because I'm not quite sure how that ties in yet. Okay, let's go to another question. Um, Linda Stansbury, I have such an ethereal connection to Prince. I grew up in Minneapolis the same time as him. He was such a big part of that town and was very philanthropic under the radar, of course. I would love for you to ask him if he avoided LA and stayed firmly grounded in Minnesota because of the undesirable energy in LA or another reason. So why were you not in L.A.? Why were you not in L.A.? The city of angels, he smirks. Okay. Um, there is a, like a sort of smirk. I'm sure there are many of you watching this that might live in L.A. who are angelic and uh, he's not mocking you, but he's saying there's a lot beneath the surface there that is not at all angelic <laughs> and not at all celestial. And there's just this, I'm just wanting to do that. I'm just wanting to do that. It's like I needed to distance myself from that. I didn't want to be part of that. 
Um, and there is something about um, cool, coolness. Um, I think you have quite cold wet, wet weather over there, don't you? Cold winters. Um, and there's something to do. He's given me the analogy of a germ. I'm not meaning this to be at all offensive to LA as, as a whole. It's more to do with this underbelly within LA. Um, and it's, he said it's like a germ. If you get too close to it, if you're exposed to it, it can be quite infectious. So to be at a distance is good. And equally, there's something about the cool, the coolness um, in uh, Minnesota, which sort of helps to um, stop that infectious energy which can bring people down. Yeah. Um, he's also just wanting to lighten it up now because he doesn't want to get into all the conspiracy stuff again. Um, it's as though he's saying, I was flamboyant enough. I didn't need to go to LA to... Okay, he's saying, I didn't need to go to LA to find myself. Um, there's also this energy I'm just picking up a of LA, which is flamboyant and glamorous at one level anyway, on the surface. That's certainly why some people are attracted to it. And he's, he's sort of like, I was, I was, I was flamboyant enough. I didn't need to go. But there's also this thing about, I didn't need to go to find myself there. Um, I didn't need to go there and be found. I, 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 it's very much about being your own person. And there seems to almost be like quite a, I mean, he loved his, he loved his city. He loved where he lived, but there's also quite a stubbornness here as well which is sort of um, wanting to make a stand and say, I don't need to go there to be successful. I don't need to do that. I don't need to follow that, that well-trodden path. Um, I can be different and do it in a different way, in a different place. And I think that was a big part also, he's saying, of why he set up um, uh, Paisley Park as well. It's as though he wanted it to be in a different state. That's the whole point of it. He didn't want it to be somewhere like LA, where it would have just been absorbed into a number of different other things that are there. He's showing me like these coach, coach tours that go around LA, where people are sort of, he's saying, gawking at famous people's houses. And it's like, that's where so-and-so lives and that's where this person lives. He said, oh, I didn't want any of that at all. I didn't want to be on some sort of... Um, uh, OK, he's being quite outspoken, freak show circus, OK? Uh, I didn't want any part of that. Not judging that that is what other people choose, but it's not, it wasn't me. So he says, I wanted to create something outside of that in a different place with a completely different energy. And I'm just trying to get a sense of the difference in the energy. So, um... He says, I could keep a cool head in um, Minnesota. I could keep a cool head there. Um, I could, I could think, I could think, I could be, I had space. Um, I knew I was very well loved within, um, where I, around where I lived. I knew I was very loved uh, in my locality and I loved the people there as well. But equally they gave me space. There's this feeling that they gave me space um, that I wasn't gawked at, that it just feels like there's, there was a respect there. It feels like there was a respect and it's as though the respect wouldn't have been the same he feels if he had been in LA. Okay. Um, yeah, Marie Snook Linda, he knew there was not a good energy for him in LA and he was right. Okay. Yeah. Somebody says Warner Brothers is there. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's this thing about, I just want to keep my distance. I don't, I don't want to be there. Okay, let's carry on. Um, a lot of people just saying we love you. <laughs> Keep them coming, he says. Mm. Angela Frank, this is the thing about the music being released. Amanda, please ask him about the music that is being released out of Paisley Park. His music is owned by the same people who have blood on their hands. I'm sorry, can't think of another way of saying it. Morris, I won't, won't say the name. Oh no, Morris Day. Okay, Morris Day commented on how he doesn't like what's happening around this. 
So then in his honour, I do not purchase the new mu music, I'm torn. It deserves to be heard, but this way doesn't feel right. Okay, well, we have sort of answered that, Angela, haven't we? He's saying just allow the floodgates to open. Don't worry about the gatekeepers. Um, and just let the, mon let the, um, the, the music be released and heard. He wants you to hear it. Um, can you ask him what he thinks about the current situation in the world? Been listening to Planet Earth lately. That's Mariska Allwood. Current situation in the world, Prince. He says, well, it's a bit like a paisley pattern, isn't it? But a knotted one. People are starting to see um, the connections <clears throat> more than they used to be able to. Less tunnel vision and more people waking up to the interconnectivity for good and for bad. OK, um, for bad, he means just the fact that certain people who are connected in places of power um, feed off each other, he's saying, um, and have strength in numbers or certainly have had strength in numbers in the past. But he's saying those connections are starting to be added up now and people are starting to, um, he's doing this, you know, scratch their heads and sort of um, start to ask questions, which is good. So he's talking about being able to see connections more. Um, but he said, please don't just keep focusing on the negative. Uh, he said, there's a lot of that going on. Um, So-and-so is friends with this person, so that means whatever. Um, he's saying also look at the good in the world. There's a lot of good. There's a lot of people working for good. So rather than just always concentrating on these chains of dysfunction is what he's calling. Why not pay attention to the chains of beauty is what he's saying. The chains of beauty and the chains of love and the chains of harmony and the chains of light and the chains of healing. Um, and concentrate on that neck, on that network. He says there's so much emphasis on lower networks and un I understand that he says in terms of bringing them down but equally remember the basic law of the universe which is that what you focus on you get more of so the more fo the more and more focus on um, darker networks out there which uh, are out there uh, actually what it can do is it can feed that so he's saying concentrate on the on the networks of light the good people in the world the um, good leaders good teachers good people good friends um, good artists and let that be the inspiration um, current situation in the world is quite a huge question to be honest so I might come back to that um, Uh, Ray M. Franson, because he was such a private person and would probably have enjoyed the stay in place orders, uh, what would his advice be now to help people having a hard time staying in during this pandemic? Um, OK. So any advice in terms of lockdown? OK, he's saying, isn't it ironic? Um, lockdown is actually creating um, the opening of the floodgates. And what he means by this is he's showing me the words lock down imply that everything is locked down in terms of, um, it, well, lockdown means everything is locked down. But he's saying what it's actually doing is it's um, opening, it's unlocking a lot of creativity in a lot of people because people have got no choice but to actually start to pick up the paintbrush or start to try and compose a bit of music, or start to try and build networks in different ways, reach out to people in different ways, do business in different ways, um, reinvent themselves. Uh, he says that that's happening a lot in relationships. Uh, lockdown is actually causing an unlocking and a healing of many things where people are actually able to start to see actually this is not working for me this is not right this is uh, there's a new direction that I need to go into so it's it's like this he's showing me this um, ironic contrast between lockdown which is like everything's locked down in terms of emotions you know you stay there you you know do nothing but he's saying what's actually happening is it's enabling this amazing flowering um, that you might not be able to fully see yet but it is germinating in a huge way and he says when the world go 
goes back into a more um, balanced state. He's just saying a balanced state uh, in terms of being able to go out and do what we used to be able to go and do. He says you're going to see an absolute explosion in terms of new projects, new ideas, new books, new pieces of music, new pieces of art, new relationships, new babies, um, new, new projects that will all have been created from this period of lockdown. So he says, I actually see it in, a, in quite a positive way. Um, sense. He says it's like anything, you can view it as negative or you can view it as positive. He says the ones that are viewing it positively in terms of it giving them an opportunity to go within and bring something out of themselves and find out more about themselves, they are the true winners. He says the ones that are rebelling against it and um, not wanting to uh, see the positives in the situation will ultimately be the ones that truly lose long term. He said, because make no mistake about it, there's going to be a big race on when this is all over. And what he means by that is he's showing me this flood of people um, with, um, he's showing it to me in quite a jokey way, but it's almost like, say you're a publisher, okay? And it's, I'm being shown all of these people flooding towards publishers with sort of like a sat, he's showing me like a satchel underneath their arm, okay? With like the book that they've written or the ideas that they've come up with. And then it's like the publishers are like, whoa, you know, we've got like, we usually have 100 submissions for new ideas and now we've got 10,000. How the hell are we going to cope with this? Well, he says also, of course, okay, so publishing, you don't want to say anything about publishing. Uh, he says to be an autonomous sovereign being, um, it's possible to take ownership of all aspects. So he's saying there will always be a place for publishing houses, um, but equally there's going to be a lot of cottage, cottage industries sprouting up all over the world um, where people are able to get their works out in a more uh, in a in a cheaper way, but uh, in a in a way that does reach people. So new ways of communication are just coming in. New projects. He's actually quite excited about this. Um, the birth of the new age. He's saying is going to come in with just an explosion. He, I keep wanting to say flower power. That's what it feels like. So I guess that's a nod back to the the sixties. The energy of flower power. And he's saying, and if you've then created something which is like a flower, of course, it's then up to you to fertilize it and ensure that it grows. Give it enough water, give it enough sun. Um, he says too many people just come up with the idea, which is brilliant, and then they walk away from it. They get discouraged too early. So he's saying you have to nurture, um, nurture anything of value and bring it to the fore. And he's saying another thing that will happen is it's like the cream will rise to the top. So the best of the best will be picked. And he's saying, of course, that's always happened to a degree with publishers. They pick the best of the best. But it's as though there's going to be a wider pool for them to be able to choose from. And some of the new names that come in in all in all fields are going to be new names. So, it, you know, he's saying the thing with publishers I'm feeling this is particularly in terms of writing, but it's also music, he's saying, is it's like, you know, the old name sell. And he says it's, it's, it's understandable, but sometimes the old names don't deserve to still be having their, their books and their music published. Uh, he's saying that might be a controversial statement, but it's the truth. He said, I would have, if I had lived longer into my 70s and I produced a Duff album, I would have wanted somebody to have turned around to me and say, actually, you know, not sure that's that's up to scratch. I guess he had his own label anyway by that time. But, you know, it's he's just showing I'm not going to say who, but he's showing me some artists who are still carrying on way into their you know old age. And it's as though he's actually saying they're spoiling their legacy um, because actually their main good work was in the past. Everybody. There's a time for everything. There's a season for everything. And so some of these new entrepreneurs, creative entrepreneurs, it's like it's going to be their time to shine. So some of these older people who are not producing the quality anymore, they need to make way for the youngsters. But youngster is not in terms of age, it's just in terms of give somebody else a chance to shine. It's like he's banging a drum for that. It's like I'm banging a drum for that, you know. Uh, there needs to be fresh blood, there needs to be fresh blood into the industry. 
um, new ideas and this lockdown period has instigated that it's like he's showing me a match that's been ignited in so many people and uh, he's saying you keep hold of your match that's alight and you believe in that and you just take it to whoever you need to take it to and if you can't get a publisher or a producer or whatever he says um, remember you are master manifestors okay let's talk a little bit about that prince then Yeah, he's like an he's like an alchemist prince. That's what I feel his energy is. He's like an alchemist. Um, he was a, he was somebody who was able just to weave um, energies and create. And uh, he's saying everybody is like that. It's just they've forgotten. So the more that you step into your sovereignty, the more that you step into your own sense of worth, um, the more that you realise that anything is possible but you have to have the mindset that anything is possible and you have to have the mindset that the universe is for me not against me okay the universe is for me not against me you know this tree going back to that tree that has taken many many years to get to that point you know and so it's this thing about feeding um feeding ourselves nurturing ourselves to be the best that we can be Okay, let's go on to another question. Let's go, I want to ask him about this symbol for New Earth, because um, he's been talking to me a little bit about this before I actually pressed the camera. Um, so in one of my other videos, it might have been, I can't remember which one it was, one of the first two that I did on Prince, he talked about symbols, obviously he had a symbol for a name, but he said there was going to be a symbol for New Earth, or he ins insinuated there might be a symbol for New Earth. So I asked him about that today and he was quite um, outspoken and, 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 and so I'm just going to go back into that now. So can you say something about the new earth symbol? Okay. Uh, now he's taken me back to that, this photograph I've got, I've got of him with the word slave on his cheek. Uh, he's saying, why would I give you just one symbol that comes from me? Okay. Which is the one that then everybody has to use. Do you not see that by me doing that, I would be making, I would be enforcing on you um, an energetic signature that even though if it was good, might not be the best that it can be for you. So he, what he's saying is there isn't one symbol for new earth. He's saying you are supposed to co-create new earth. And you're supposed to do it very much like the trees in a forest. All the trees in a forest are connected to each other. So he's saying every, sing well, every single person, but people that are called to work with symbols, he says you need to bring forth from your own creative expression um, an energetic signature is what he's wanting to call it, which represents your version of new earth. Because he's showing me new earth as like, he's like a, it's like a great big cauldron. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a cauldron, it's like a boiling pot of potions and lotions. And into it, each of us put our individual signatures, our hopes, our desires um, for new earth, what we wish it to be. But he's saying, don't just wish it for yourself. Wish it for seven generations hence. Try to keep in your mind that you're creating something for future generations. You're not just creating for what do I want tomorrow or next year or in 10 years. You're creating for future generations. So into the pot, into the cauldron, goes an energetic code that comes from you. Now he's saying, you know, we're getting a bit hung up on the word symbol because actually a symbol is basically just an energetic signature. So an energetic signature could also be a colour, it could also be a sound, it could be a tone, it could be a texture, or it could actually be a symbol, okay? Um, but the point is that if we all put our own representations of what we think that is, <clears throat> what the universe then does is it stirs the pot, okay? It stirs the pot and it comes up with what that recipe is, which ultimately will create one thing which will be a combination of all the colours that have gone in, all of the sounds that have gone in, um, and it will be something quite magnificent. So that's what he's wanting to say, because he otherwise it's, he's, he's, he's back, again, he's backing off, because it's like, whoa, 
Why do they want me to give them just one one symbol? New Earth isn't about one symbol. He says, he says he's laughing. He's saying, I know this will get me into trouble. He's saying it's not about New World Order, which is like there's just one, there's one brand, you know, you have one brand. <laughs> he's saying, no, no, uh, it can't be that. OK, so come up with your own. And he says, don't dismiss what comes through. Um, don't overthink it. Let it come from your... He's actually saying let it come from your gut. I mean, obviously, it's also a link to the heart. But I'm, I'm feeling it's like it comes from your gut. What, what, for whatever reason, are you wanting to put into that collective pot? So see that collective pot. I think we're going to do that now, actually, as a group. I'm also just shuffling these sacred geometry cards, just because I don't know why. I just am. I just want to see what comes up here. Himalayan passage comes up. The mountains... It's got the Om symbol in the centre of this card. The Om is the centre of is the is the symbol of creation. Um, oh, okay. He's saying that's what Mother Earth wants to put into the pot. Okay, because he's saying don't realise that every sentient being on this planet put something into the pot to create the new Earth. So Mother Earth wants to put in the energy of the elements. Of course she does, which is why we've got the mountains, we've got the air, we've got Earth. Um, we've got water, we've got the streams of water. Underneath the mountains is the molten centre of the earth, the, the fire. The cosmos is represented by here. So Mother Earth is putting all the elements into it. She's putting the sound of creation into it. But she is. Mother Earth is like the mother here. You know, she's the mother who's waiting on the expectant child to be born. The expectant child is New Earth. And she's waiting for us to sort of... Um, yeah, it's, it's not quite list our requirements, but put our wishes in. Requirements is not the right word. Wishes, what our wishes are. Um, in the same way that when a baby is born, you wish it good health. OK, so it's something along those lines. But yeah, he's not very he's not happy about, you know, just I'm going to give you one symbol. I mean, I was watching something with him recently where he was talking about the ankh and um which I think he always used to wear the ankh or be associated with the ankh. And again, it, I, think the, I think the interview was wanting to know sort of why, why the ankh, you know, it's like, it's like an energy, well, why not? Why not? Because to me, this is, some, this is a symbol that he uh, linked to. Um, is there anything you want to say about the ankh, having said that, Prince? Let's just see, is there anything you want to say about the ankh, the ankh? It's a very sexual energy as well as a very um, sacred energy, he's saying, because I'm looking at this now and I'm just seeing this part of it, which can represent the female um, opening. <laughs> I don't wanna, I'm such a prude. Uh, he's laughing at me. He's laughing at me. Um, He likes the fact that I'm able to laugh at myself. He says it's really important that people should be able to laugh at themselves and not take themselves too seriously in life. Um, no, in all seriousness, there is, okay? So there's the opening the, where the baby comes out. It's like the crowning. Um, this is masculine, this is feminine, okay? So it's a symbol of masculine and feminine. It's also a symbol obviously linked into eternal life. Um, Halo, I'm seeing. Halo. Tree, I'm seeing. Tree of life. I don't know whether he ever studied the tree of life, Kabbalah. I know he was a Jehovah's Witness and then he became um, Christian, didn't he? I think he became Christian. Did he become Christian? I need to look that up. Um, but tree of life. I'm being taken to the tree of life with Prince. Why am I being taken to the tree of life, Prince? Uh, tree of life, Kabbalah. I think um, he was just, I think very, this is very private. I think privately he was very interested in a lot of different religions around the world or faiths, belief systems. Um, so there's something here to do with the tree of life as well. I mean, now 
he's showing me the tree of life if you understand the tree of life okay uh, it's this blueprint this map that we uh, navigate from spirit to earth and then from earth to spirit and there are these different serotoph and we're supposed to move between different states of consciousness and we learn different things upon the tree basically and there's an awful lot to it it's a lifetime study so i've just talked about that in 20 seconds but the point is he's now showing me himself and it's like he's hovering over the tree of life um i've got a representation of it here actually i think yeah he's showing me that he's like he's levitating over the tree of life um and he's saying how much it's much easier to go between these different states of being um in spirit <laughs> uh now as a consciousness as he is now um, when we're earthbound, it's very easy to get stuck on different parts of the tree. So it's interesting, we've got the tree coming up. The wise friend. You see, this card says the wise friend. It's almost as though we can't, we, we don't view life as the wise friend. We don't view the experiences that we have along the tree as wise friends. That's why now I understand this card. It's like there's different owls on the tree. The owls all are representing different points that you can be at. They're friends. They're places of wisdom and learning. Um, they're on both sides of the tree. They're on the masculine side, the feminine side, and they're at the top. Um, I don't know. Something to do with Tree of Life with him. Okay. So again, this does assume, you know, basic, something basic about the Tree of Life. But again, just think that these serotoph represent... Um, different places of learning upon the tree. He's saying what happens is people get stuck on one particular place and they, and they hold on for dear life on that particular spot of the tree until, what Prince says, is life comes and life shakes the tree, okay? And then sometimes you fall from your spot on the tree and you've got to move to a different area of life. You've got to learn something different. Maybe a relationship fails, maybe a job ends. Uh, maybe illness comes in, maybe, I don't know, children arrive, children leave, whatever. All of the things that we go through in life. Um, the point about the tree is you're not supposed to just stay in one particular spot. You're supposed to move. You're supposed to be fluid. Again, go back to this painting of the horse. You know, this is your life force, okay? This is your life force energy. You are sitting upon this extraordinary engine, is what he's saying. There is this engine inside you that when it's fully powered up, do you think that horse just wants to stand in that one particular part of the water? No, it's galloping forward. It's wanting to explore. He said this is also to do with exploration in the mind as well. Um, it's also to do with exploration in the mind. And I'm now being drawn to that triangle in my window because exploration of the mind, how many people over goodness knows how many videos I've done, when they see that triangle, which is obviously the roof of the house opposite, people are saying to me, do you live near the mountains? Is that a pyramid in the background? And I'm not mocking those people because that, what, that, what's happened is their mind has taken them on a journey away from the humdrum that that's just my neighbor's roof to actually, my God, is that the mountain? Is that a pyramid? Okay, so your mind is able to um, take you to different places along the tree as well. Okay, but you mustn't stay static. He's got this thing about don't stay static. Don't play it safe. Remember at the start, he was like, oh, when you mentioned the word safe, safety in terms of creativity, it's like, no. Um, Prince and Freddie Mercury have still got a bit of healing to do, but, you know, Freddie came in a little bit today as well. Is it okay just to quickly mention in Prince? Okay, Prince is still like, oh. But um, it's to do with the fact that Freddie Mercury was very like this. He was sort of like, I'm going to write music in terms of um, what I want to do. It doesn't matter if the person that's bought the, the last five albums doesn't like it. That's tough for them. I'm doing what I want to do. Prince is very like that as well, okay? Can you see that, is that a bridge maybe between the two of you? Possibly, <laughs> saying possibly. I don't know what it is with those two. They're just very, um, they're very distant still. I'm not going to push him on that. He's like this. He's, he's, he's squirming a bit. He's not, I don't know. Okay, no, no I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. 
Freddie is a bit full on, isn't he? He is a bit full on, Prince, I know. He's saying I'm full on in a different way. Maybe that's part of the problem. Yeah, okay. You Full on is a good good way to be there because it's like, okay, he's saying we're both fully charged. Um, and he said it's a bit like, he's saying it's a bit like Freddie and I are both like these two horses. We, we both have this energy that's fully charged. And what happens when two horses collide is, is, is sort of the energy that I've got here. So... Um, be interesting to look at the astrology of those two. There must be something there that's just a bit of a clash. Anyway, let's go to another question for you, Prince. Are you doing all right? Yeah, I'm just going to have some water. Let's see. Angela James. I just read the book Matey wrote about her life with him and watched his interview with Oprah. He's a creative genius. I've always loved his music and the theatre of his concerts and videos. I would love to know how he tapped into all that creativity. Mm. By choosing to. By choosing to is the answer to that. Do you want to explain a bit more about that? by choosing to align to the highest frequency, by choosing to say yes to life, by choosing to not give a damn, by choosing, in terms of what people think is what he means, um, by choosing to follow my own path, by choosing to be fearless. This word choosing is really important with him because he says there's always a choice in life to either do or not do. He says it's not a case of right or wrong either. It's just a choice. Do you choose to live life to the fullest? To complete what you came here to do? To captivate the essence of your soul whilst you are incarnated? Or do you choose to just do this? And I just want to drum my hands on the, drum my fingers on the desk. It's like, ho hum, ho hum. Another day, another day. How should we get through this one? <laughs> you know? It's so not what he was. Lorna Coleman, I've always been drawn to him and still get goosebumps when I remember how close I was to him at one of his concerts. Lucky you, Lorna. Please ask him if he has lived many lives on other planets and does he think he would again choose the Earth for another human life? And what is his favourite place in the universe? OK, um, please ask him if he has lived many lives on other planets and does he think he would again choose the Earth for another human life? I don't know why, but today I'm picking up a very Merlin type energy with him. Um, I wanted to say I feel as though he studied at the court of Merlin. I mean, I don't even know if Merlin had a court, but Merlin was very much, you know, the alchemist type energy. He's showing me now Merlin with like one of those wizard hats, one of the wizard hats, um, purple hat with stars on, gold stars. I mean, you know, I'm sure Merlin didn't walk around with a hat like that, but you know, it's just, he's, he's saying, I'm using my imagination. Um, Merlin. Okay, he's saying Merlin is one of these characters, a bit like Prince. He's saying, he doesn't wish this to sound egotistical. So it's my translation of what he's trying to say, but it's something like, you know, there are people on earth um, or people that have lived and beings that we know, and we just know them by one name, you know, uh, whether it's Prince, Elvis, um, Merlin, you know, it's just like Merlin. Um, and he says not many people really understand the Merlin energy. Um, it's very old, it's very ancient. Um, he's saying there's not as many people remember it as they should. Many people have had um, lifetimes where they have weaved the Merlin magic. 
I, I just feel that this guy was around Prince. I just feel like he, he had a lifetime where there's something linked into the Merlin energy. But again, you see, he's now shown me that Merlin isn't just an earthbound energy. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it had to have been a lifetime on, on planet Earth. He's shown me that the Merlin energy is something that is that transcends a particular planet, that word transcendence again. So I feel as though he studied in a want of a better word school, but it's not a building. The University of Life is what he's saying, but eternal life. And he studied under the some of the great masters, and one of them was Merlin. Merlin. And Merlin helped him to understand how you can weave everything together. You can work with energies. And I think that's why he was showing me this cauldron pot. You know, the cauldron pot is symbolic, but it's sort of like we that's just because we need a visual representation of what the hell we're doing. We're being asked to put something into a into a cauldron, as it were, to create something because our human mind needs something to get it to, to, to hang on to. But that's basically what we're doing most. But. But what Prince seemed to be able to do was just be able to weave these energies together. Um, so there's a Merlin energy. Uh, has he lived many lives on other planets? Yes, but it's a strange thing to say. I'm feeling as though a lot of the lives on other planets weren't that long. Um, it's as though he just dipped into them and then dipped out of them. There have been places, though, where he's... He, he has been old, old, um, very old. I'm just trying to get a sense of where that would be. I'm not even sure if I can... <sighs> Anybody that knows anything about the star system and the galaxy and where everything is placed, I'm going left. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, that's not much help. But it's like, I think it's because some of these places he's showing me, it's like we don't even know what their names are. So it makes no sense for me to say it's... Why am I wanting to say Kepler? What's Kepler? Let me just look up Kepler. 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 Star. Kepler star. Oh, it is. There is a star system called Kepler. Uh, Kepler 62. Kepler 62 is a star somewhat cooler and smaller than the sun in the constellation Lyra. 1,200 light years from Earth. It's located within the field of vision of the Kepler spacecraft, the satellite that NASA's Kepler mission used to detect planets that may be transiting their stars. Okay, there's lots of different, um, there's also Kepler 69, Kepler 62, Kepler 22, um, Kepler 6, mm, okay. Right, he's taking me to Kepler. Multi-planet star systems found by the Kepler Space Telescope. Yeah, this is like star systems within star systems. It's like these aren't the Kepler 452 system. Okay, what do you want to say about Kepler? He's trying to show it to me in a way that I will understand and that I can translate. Because to be honest, it's of a different realm and a different dimension and it's a different frequency and I'm not familiar with it. And most people aren't familiar with it, he says. Again, he's just showing me the interconnectivity of everything. I've got like this, um, he's showing it, it looks a bit to me like Spaghetti Junction, but it's trains. It's like these tracks that all interconnect and lead to other planets and other star systems. Oh, it's the Paisley pattern. And we're back to the Paisley pattern. There's something to do with, again, if you look up at the night sky, if you were to see all of the different stars or planets within the Kepler system, 
it's the Kepler star system. It's like there's, they're all, it's like here, there, everywhere. It's all interlinked. And I'm just seeing these tracks, like these imaginary train lines. I mean, they're not train lines, of course, but everything connecting, everything weaving together. Um, I can't remember what the question was now, but anyway. So, oh, we were asking, has he had lives on other planets? He's taken me to Kepler, okay. Would he choose another Earth? Would he choose another life as a human? Um, would you come back and reincarnate? I think I've asked him that question before and I can't remember what he said last time, but I'm getting a yes this time. I'm getting a yes that I think he would. Yeah, he would. Was he the one? No, it was, it's a weird thing with him and Freddie Mercury today. Because I remember now Freddie Mercury says he was, he was going to come back as a woman and I was now just thinking, I was about to say the same for Prince. But yeah, I think he would. But I don't think it's like an immediate plan to do so. Um... Okay, one more question. I'm actually going to look for a question on Instagram because I always forget that I've got followers on Instagram and I really appreciate you all that are on there. So let's go to a question from Instagram. Um, okay, see what people are asking on there. <sighs> Prince tribute two nights ago in the US. So much energy, I could hardly sleep in a good way. I didn't see that, obviously. Okay, Chris Wheatcraft. I communicate with Prince as well, but as of late, he seems extremely busy. What I'm getting from him is that he is working on some sort of a new, even bigger project. And that he may also be combining some of the elements of all of his incarnations into something new. Maybe you could ask him about this. Maybe he's ascending further. Maybe that's what he was trying to tell me and I didn't quite get it. But if you could ask him what projects he's working on and how we can aid him by doing the work here on this plane, that would be great. Okay, so what projects he's working on. But also I'm quite interested in what his energy, in this thing about, is he ascending himself? Okay, so just give me a snapshot of what you're doing at the moment, Prince. I'm getting this energy of like a tornado. It's like a tornado type energy. It is a color purple. Um, he's bringing down energy from wherever he is to the earth plane and it's coming down in like a funneled tunnel, a uh, tornado type energy. Doesn't mean it is a tornado. It's just that's the way that I'm being shown it. And it's like the mother earth He's showing me like somebody having an operation in a hospital, but the person on the operating table is Mother Earth. And he is helping coordinate transmutation energy into key spots around Mother Earth. Uh, one of them is the throat. Wherever the throat chakra is in the earth, there's some energy going in there. Um, but it's earth energy rather than water energy. Um, so there's something to do with he's helping to transmute the lower energy on earth. He's targeting specific areas. Wouldn't be surprised if he's targeting the energy around LA as well. Do you want to say anything about that area? Yeah, he's not a fan. He's not a fan, guys. Don't want to offend people that live there, but you know, this is from his perspective, remember, and what he saw and what he witnessed. And he's talking about the underbelly, underbelly and he's saying cesspit, cesspit. It's like a cesspit energy. And he's, it's like a targeted weapon is what he's saying. That's what he's doing. He's saying it's like, we've got now, 
he's talking about higher powers as an alchemist we have like a targeted energy weapon that we can bring in to um ease the poison out um he's showing me it's a bit gross thing to show but it's like a spot and it's like you know and you it pops and the pus comes out that's what it's like and it's like it's really a bit gross it's gross so there's an energy of grossness there in terms of what's underneath that needs to come up and be released. And I think we all sort of know what we're talking about there. Um, is it happening in the way that it's meant to be happening, Prince? You know, people being exposed, people coming up for judgment in the way that it's meant to. OK, he's showing me a syringe. And you know when you fill up a syringe with whatever you're filling it up with and you, ha you, you pull the syringe out quite slowly. So he's showing me that the poison is being pulled out quite slowly, but it's being done in a very measured way. Um, and also very much like when you use a syringe, um, the, the, the fluid within it takes up all of the cavity. So I'm, I'm, look, I'm thinking of something like a cowpaw syringe, okay, when my kids were young. So you have those, um, you know, it's like you, you suck up the medicine and every single part of the tube is full. So nothing is left that shouldn't be there. So it's like they're drawing out the poison. So he's, he's doing two things. He's helping to draw out the poison, but he's also directing energetic waves which come down like a tornado into particular spots so that then it can be extracted. Do you want to say anything else about um, justice coming? He's gone really quiet. Um, There's an energy of not wanting to get me in trouble as well. Doesn't need to be publicly said, it will soon be apparent. Okay. He doesn't like gossip, he doesn't like speculation. Just deal with the facts as they arise. See with your own eyes. 2020 vision. Okay, let's just see if there's anything else he wants to say today. Before I close down. It is Sunday here, so let me get on with my day. So Prince, very, very grateful that you're here. Love being in your energy. He feels more grounded today than when he's been with me before. Um... He said, this is the thing. He says, um, I was a normal man. I was a normal human being. Um, I was presented in a way that I was not. Um, he says, I realised there were things that I did in my life that probably didn't help my cause. <laughs> He's laughing. But he's saying, ultimately, you know, I was always a little bit bemused by why everybody thought I was so mysterious. Because to me, I was just myself. He said, I, um, I was always just a normal man. Um, take away the, he's wanted, he's saying the feathers, the pearls, um, the heels. He says, I was just a normal man. And um, he says, it's actually quite good today to be here and just to feel the earth plane again. Um, Something about his size. He's kicking off his heels and he's got his feet now on the earth. He just wants you to feel his energy for a moment.
keep scanning the horizons, he says. What do you mean by that? Keep scanning the horizons, for that is where the new arrives. That is where the new day always first appears. That is where the new dawn always breaks. There's also something to do with keeping a watch on the skies, the skyline. Do you want to say anything about the galactic energy? Starships, galactic help that's here. He says, oh, it's always been here. It's always been here. He's taking me to area, um, is it area 59 in the States? Just double check that. Area 59, I think it's called. I just want to make sure I'm right. Area 59. Area 51. Area 51 he's taking me to. Which is a place uh, which is... It's a remote military base in the Nevada desert. It's been associated with aliens almost since its inception. Okay, what do you want to say about Area 51? The truth will soon be revealed. Something to do with there needs to be a dying off of the old brigade. And what he means by that is a, is a wave of people who kept information concealed and classified. And when they die out, as they are doing, just through natural means, then it's as though a new breed of people arrive to manage and care for that area and he says there's going to be slippage is the word he's using slippage leakage um he says there's going to be a whistleblower there there's going to be a whistleblower a more prominent whistleblower and this time people will actually be ready to listen to what is being leaked he says, even though information is already out there, this time it will be different. Um, and he, he's saying that the information will be released and leaked as a result of increasingly irrefutable proof that we are not alone. Um, and by that, he just keeps showing me the skyline. OK, he keeps showing me the skyline. He's saying it's going to be very similar to people starting to... Uh, understand the angelic realm, which is now much, much more commonplace than it was certainly 10 years ago. People to under people understand the signs that angels are around. It's going to be the same with the galactics. People are going to start to understand when they're around more. Um, and as a result of that, there is the opening up of um, classified information. But it will be leaked. It won't be something whereby um, a prime minister or a president comes in and releases it it's going to be through a, west, a whistleblower and he says the whistleblower will be galactic and it's as though that whistleblower who's galactic gets sent down and it's almost as though Ashtar's just like for goodness sake just help release it you know <sighs> again floodgates floodgates opening And that helps to change everything in terms of the consciousness on our planet as well. But he says it's nothing new, you know, the galactic energy has been here for millennia. My ear's going really hot. My left ear, I don't know whether that might be a sign um, that they are around. Got a real warmth in my ear. Which is different from when I know the angels are around and I get a ringing. This is like a warmth, a heat. Is the they, can they test your temperature by putting a thermometer into your ear? 
because that's what I'm getting. It's almost like the the powers above are testing the temperature in terms of is it right yet to release this information. And I'm not talking about anybody earthbound. This is a much higher consciousness. When this information gets released, Prince is saying, it won't be because of a human decision. It will be from up, up, up above. You know, that decision will have been made, that they're ready for it. They're ready to hear this stuff now. Um, okay. Right. Anything else? And then we're going to close. Let's just end with a bit of purple, I think. Message for your fans that are watching Prince. That I love them. That I'm so grateful for their love and their appreciation that carries on through um, past death. That I am always available that I'm here to remind them of the powerhouse that they are, the individual that they are, the unique expression of the divine that they are. And that I will help nurture that, encourage that. And that actually this is a magical life. And to step into that alchemy and that magic more We are all children of Merlin in that respect. We are all wizards. We always were. Okay. So I'm just going to let you uh, go now. Oh, I'm literally just getting this. It's weird. I can't even express it to you. It's just like this energy it's just like he's he just sort of like namas and then he just disappears um pulls back it's like a gravitational pull that's the only way i can describe it it's like a gravitational pull so where he had his lead boots and he was sitting it's like now he's just like elevating thank you beautiful guy Gentle energy, creative genius, and student of Merlin. Who would have thought? Much love, everyone. Take care. I'll, I'll, I'll speak to him again soon, I'm sure. I hope you enjoyed that anyway. I did too. Bye-bye for now.